yes um, eighth chapter and when jesus uh, came down uh, from the mountain large crowds followed him and a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said lord if you are willing you can make me clean you know um so this man you know because why this man had that kind of doubt about whether this is god's will or not that's the reason he was asking jesus if it is your will then cleanse me you know so in in those in the olden days like you know uh, the people who have leprosy were really treated very bad like uh, they were treated like untouchables and because of no treatment for them and they had to be put outside the city so that's why when people treat them very low untouchables like uh, they feel like they are very outcast and and also like uh, when uh, there was a curse you know in the generations when somebody is really um, uh, in a committed a sin or there is is there any curse upon them it's like that people they believe that you know because of the curse they they become leprous they got leprosy or because of sin they got leprosy you know like that this various like a uh, people have different beliefs like that so that's the reason this man uh, really had doubt that whether um, god can heal him you know so that's why he not god can heal him if god wants to heal him or not so that's the reason he came to jesus and asking uh, you know lord if you are willing you know if it is your will please heal me you can make me clean and then jesus uh, Uh, stretched out his hand and said yes i am willing you know yes i am willing be cleansed he said you know so what this um, shows us today jesus is not interested in our past or our mistakes whether we are sinful or we are not sinful whether we have a curse not curse is nothing those things you know so jesus uh, is not bothered about all those things his heart is only to heal people that's only he wanted so immediately he answered him said i am willing you know and be clean make so he he immediately his leprosy was cleansed i really want you to observe this immediately when he just said that word yes be cleansed when he said that be cleansed and he was healed immediately that's the word says immediately immediately his leprosy was cleansed you know this is what called authority means i really want you to understand what authority means authority means when we say a word it's going to happen that word has so much power that word has so much value whatever you speak it will happen that is called authority <clears throat> you know so that's why you remember the story centurion was uh, telling jesus one time you know when i i am also under authority when i say a word go it they will go when i say come they will come it means the word what we speak has got so much value and power what whatever you speak it happens that is what authority means for jesus whatever he is speaking it just happening when he say that be cleansed that's it he he was cleansed so where the leprosy gone it means even the diseases sicknesses will obey authority not only demons will obey authority even the diseases also will obey authority sicknesses also will obey authority okay that's what i want you to even the tree fig tree jesus said to the fig tree you know just he cursed he cursed the fig tree and it just dried that right so even the trees obey authority you know why all these things you need to know that 
God has authority over everything in this world. So only with the word he does things. Okay. So, okay, let's move on. So then Jesus was telling that man, you know, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Just go and show yourself to the priest. Because those days, you know, when anybody has leprosy, priest will only look and observe. He's like a, um, a, someone, like a doctor will see, examine, right? Here, priest will examine because God in the law of Moses clearly said what is leprosy, how leprosy looks like, you know, and is clearly mentioned. That's why according to the law of Moses, priest will come to know what exactly is leprosy, you know, so that's why they need to show to priest only. So priest only will tell them, this is leprosy, you must go out, right? So that's why when you are healed, you must show back to the priest. So since priest only, priest will confirm that, yes, you are healed, you know? So that's why he's telling, go to priest and show yourself to priest, right? And also in the, in the Moses law, he, it's written that when you are healed, you must, you know, give an offering, to the priest, when you must give an offering to the priest, so that you know it's like a thank offering. Offering means it's just when you want to thank the Lord about something. So, where you give that money, you need to give that money because the priest they will they will <clears throat> they uh, they will live survive on the offerings of people only right so that's why when you want to thank the lord you must give that offering to the priest so that's why he said that you know go and give offering show first to the priest right and then um uh, then okay the uh, here uh, uh jesus entered Capernaum, centurion i was talking about centurion right so centurion came centurion came to him and imploring him and saying, Lord, my servant is uh, lying paralysis, you know, uh, on the bed. You come, it's a, he, he was uh, tormented with that, right? And please come and heal him. You know, then uh, Jesus comes, oh, Jesus says, okay, I will come. I will come and heal him, right? But he, he says that, no, I'm not worthy to have you in my home because I'm not that worthy person, right? Just say a word that is enough. And, you know, be, and he says that I am also under authority. So he recognized that Jesus has authority. That's the reason he said that word. Like, you know, because he understood what authority means. Because he is also serving as an authority person. In Centurion means 100 soldiers are under him. Right, he is the leader for hundred soldiers. So that's why he understands what authority means. Right. So this, the words what they speak has carried so much value. That's the reason he was telling that I am also. And why he got that authority? Because he's under somebody's authority. Right. Then you know the army. How the army works. Everyone is uh, appointed for 100 soldiers, for 10 soldiers, one leader, 100 soldiers, one leader, and 1,000 soldiers, one leader, like that. So there are ranking system. And you see, 100 centurion will submit to the higher authority, the one who is a leader for 1,000 soldiers, right? So he will submit to that one. So, and he, under him, there are 100 soldiers working under him, right? So he understands authority. See, I submit to my authority. The way how I submit to my authority, the soldiers under me will submit to my authority, right? See, he understood how this authority works. So he recognized that Jesus looks like a man only for them, right? See, for us, we, we always visualize Jesus like a godly figure, right? But for them, 
he, uh-huh. they were looking at Jesus like a human figure only, right? But things were happening. So centurion recognized, no, no, this Jesus is under some higher authority. So that authority must be God, right? That's the reason his words carry so much value and power. So that's why centurion told him, you know, you just give a word, my servant is going to be healed. When Jesus heard this man's words, he was so amazed. Jesus was so amazed by that. Why? Because this man is not even Israel, Israelite, you know. So, and he's a Gentile man. And he was telling that, you know, I have never seen this kind of faith among Israel. I never seen being a Gentile, having such a faith, you know, the faith what he had is, my God, the, the words, what Jesus speaks, have so much power and authority, it happens. That's the faith centurion had. So he's saying that this faith I never seen among Israel, right? And that's why he was telling that, I'm telling you that day, when that day comes, many people come from east, west, south, north, are going to come and sit with Abraham. They're so-called Israelites who are called as the children of Abraham, but they will be thrown into the hell where there is torment and gnashing of teeth. But whereas these people, the so-called Gentiles, away from the law, away from Abraham, you know, but these people are going to come and take the kingdom and sit with Abraham. Beloved, it is all about faith. It's not about from what you are coming from, whether you are a Jew or not, whether you are an Israelite or not. It is all about faith, beloved. Only with faith, people get connected to the kingdom. People can enter into the kingdom of God. People can connect to the Abraham. People can connect to God. It is only faith that brings people, beloved. It is not about uh, what tribe you are, where you were born, what family you're coming from. It's nothing about that. You know, so that's what he was telling them. And uh, so Jesus said to the um, centurion, go, it shall be done. And you have great faith. He, Jesus so appreciated and so pleased with his faith. That's why, you know, the word says that nothing can move the heart of God. Please him is only our faith pleases him. And God will get so like pleased and amazed at our faith. You know? So at that moment, exactly, Jesus said, go, go and he'll be healed. Immediately at that moment, he went, Centurion went home and then inquired, you know, he found servant got healed completely. And he found the time. Okay, tell me what time exactly he got healed. Exactly the time when Jesus spoke. <laughs> he calculated, praise God. You know, and then he went to the uh, Peter house. And then when he went to Peter house and he found Peter's mo mother-in-law was sick. Just he went to uh, her and he touched her. That's all. He touched her hand and she got healed. You know, so it's, it's so amazing. You know, for some people, they receive their miracles uh, by speaking the word. But for some people, they receive their miracle just by touching. Right? So it's people is based on people faith right and jesus looks saw this lady doesn't need to even to speak a word for this lady just touches enough right jesus touched and she just got up she got up and uh, waited on him and then when evening came when evening came many were who were demon possessed and uh, you know and they all came to him and even demons, how he was doing? Just a word again. <laughs> you know, but just his word enough. 
demons also obey just with the word all demons left okay and then they were all become okay then uh, so here again he's quoting the scripture why these things are happening who written who wrote this uh, book matthew matthew he was once he was a uh, tax collector and he was called in for the ministry he wrote this book so and uh, for him you know and he was remembering the scripture in isaiah and uh, he was a jew he know the word of god he know the law very well he know the prophecies so he was remembering that scripture in isaiah you know oh this is what it's why these miracle healings are happening because isaiah already prophesied that you know and the son of god is going to carry all our infirmities and diseases upon him and to give a exchange took place he took our diseases and he given us healing right and that's why he was remembering that scripture and that's why he quoted the scripture here okay then next up uh, when jesus saw the crowd and then um, you know and then he uh, told them uh, let's go to the other side of the sea okay and then um one uh, teacher came to him teachers of the law right came to him and said uh, um i will follow wherever you go jesus i want to come right and then jesus said uh, very strangely he replied to him saying that you know it is not like a positive like, okay you come and follow me he was not giving that kind of answer to this man you know jesus was telling him foxes have holes birds have nest but the son of god have no room even to lay head you know and you know because he was a teacher wants to know that teacher wants to know where he lives you know so i want to go with him and be with him so because you know why jesus answered this kind of uh, uh, reply to this man and because he know every person's heart right and the motives of their heart why they want to follow him he knows their motives right maybe that person the teacher's heart motive was not right you know because in the after that he asked another disciple see look here another of the disciple verse 21 said to him lord uh, and I, why because he asked that disciple to follow him see for this disciple for this man teacher who wants to follow him he replied to him you know there is no room for son of man <laughs> right and but for him he is not giving him straight answer but whereas for other disciple actually he asked other disciple to follow him even he asked peter to follow him he asked matthew to follow him he asked andrew to follow him but whereas come to this man he given that reply you know so why the motives might be not right for him you know see sometimes we also get so excited when someone is so popular and famous becoming so famous so many people are following this man if i'm also with him if i go with him i also become famous i also become popular right so that's why okay so my, sometimes you know people want to serve god because for popularity to become famous you know oh this ministry when you start healing people when you start healing the sick when you have this authority there so many demons are going to leave you know we become so famous people we become popular so many people follow us see teachers right he was a teacher probably he was having that kind of desire because these were these teachers always have the desire to be recognized to be accepted to be noticed by everybody and that's the reason he he probably asking jesus that's why jesus said you know what i don't even have a house you know i don't have anything shiny things for you to follow me 
right? So he was telling that even foxes have something to stay on in, live in. Even birds have some nest, but I don't have anything such things, you know, what you are expecting. I don't have any such things to follow, right? So he replied to him like that. And then, but another disciple, he said that, you know, follow. Mm, then uh, that disciple giving, that disciple had some problem. He was telling Jesus, you know what, just give me some time. I will follow you. I will follow you. Just give me some time, you know. But there is a valid reason for it. He was telling that, you know, let me go and bury my father. Maybe father passed away, right? Just let me go and bury my father. I'll come back and follow you. But Jesus said, let the, let the dead bury themselves, you know, you follow me. You know why he said that? Do you think God do not want us to do such things, you know, burying and, you know, going to funerals and cemetery? It's not like that, beloved. That's not his point. That's not the point he's making here. The point he's making here is that the following Obeying God is the number one in your life. You cannot give any excuse when it comes to the obeying whatever Jesus asks you to do. You must obey immediately. You must not give any excuse. He actually given a very valued ex excuse there. You know, very valid. It's, he's not asking that, okay, I have some pleasure trip to go. I have to go and come. He's not asking such things. It's nothing a pleasure trip thing that his father passed away. It means God is letting all of us know that when it comes to obeying God, beloved, when God asking you to do something, you right away have to obey. Right away, beloved. You know, God knows what problems you are going through. God knows what needs you have today. God knows what your responsibilities, what your duties, you know, today. But still knowingly, knowing everything, knowing your condition, knowing your circumstances. Can anything hide? Can be anything hidden from God? Knowing everything. If God is asking you to do something, beloved, you must do it. You know what? God will give grace for you to meet all the needs, beloved. Once you obey God, he will give you the power. He will give you the grace or he will take care of your problem some way or the other. Your needs will be met. Hallelujah. So let's move on. And then um, he got into the boat and then his disciples followed him. Okay, And then he was saying that, he told them before going to that, you must understand here. He already told them, you know, let's go to the other side. Verse 18, he said, he gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea. He gave orders. He gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea, right? After that, this conversation happened. And then finally, they got into the boat. According to his word only, they all started going towards other side of the shore. Okay, so they were all going. And then uh, what happened is that <clears throat> he was sleeping in the boat. When he was sleeping, storm came. So there was a big storm. So, and then, and disciples were so afraid of the storm. And they were just waking, waking him up, Jesus. Jesus, how come you're sleeping? We are all perishing here. You know, we are going to drown. How come you're sleeping now? You know, wake up. And they're telling Jesus about it. Do something. Why, that, why they're waking up Jesus? Because Jesus know, has a power, right? Jesus can only save them. So they know that. So they're waking him up. Do something. We are drowning. You know? And then Jesus got, got up and then immediately what he said, 
he rebuked he rebuked the winds he rebuked the sea and it became perfectly calm and then and they were all amazed you know and what kind of man is this and how come they all um, even the storm and that also obey him you know actually in another book it says you know what it says in this book it's not written but in another book it is written after he rebuked the storm then he turned to disciples he rebuked them too you know what he tells them where is your faith he asked them that question where is your faith you know um so what it means is why he is asking that question disciples where is your faith it means that when you why you are afraid of the storm don't you believe in me that's what he was saying don't you have faith in me don't you have faith in my words because i told you let's go to the other side so don't you trust my word if i told you to go to the other side i'm there to take you i will take you safely why do you think that you are going to drown you will never drown because i am the one who is taking you there because i asked you to go and i'm going to be with you only right when you are going i'm with you and why you are going to drown when i'm with you you are not going to drown right so that's what faith be lord you know god is expecting us to have faith in his word even the storm comes and also i want to tell you <clears throat> don't think that you know storms coming means we are not doing right or maybe we are doing wrong that's why we are in troubles today or maybe we are we are disobeying god something sin we committed that's why we are facing storms no beloved what did they commit they obeyed god and they are going in the boat because they obeyed god to go right and the storm came so i want you to know that storms also come even you obey god too even you are doing in will of god even you are in the perfect will of god you are going to still face storms okay so but i want you to know that god is expecting all of you when you face storms in life right storm can be a problems in your life even you face storms in your life you must put your faith in the word of god what god is speaking to you that should be your focus okay and should not be afraid and okay so um then they were so amazed see even the storm obeyed he has authority over the storm right then okay they came to the other side of the um of the, of the uh, lake they came to the other side right so other side of the country then that took a name is gadar gadarins gadarins okay i don't know in telugu garasine something but in the, in english it's in my bible it said gadarins okay so there when he went uh, to that place and um, see i now you question yourself why god asked them to go to the other side to meet this two because in that area two men were demon possessed to how badly they were possessed we have seen many people demon possessed i have seen many people right they even came to prayer for deliverance right but here these two demon possessed are so violent people they can't even live among people they had to be away from the city they were actually living in a um, cemetery Uh, burial ground burial ground and they were chained they were chained it means handcuffed in the in the uh, hands and the feet so somebody did that who did somebody in the the people in the city they could not uh, uh, bear these people violence maybe they were so violent maybe they're harming people i think maybe they're hurting everybody in the city that's why they had to put them in chains handcuff them and left them in the cemetery and they were just going in the cemetery right they were i don't know 
they were in chains they were in the cemetery cemetery okay then they when they saw jesus when they saw jesus they came running so now i want you to notice something is this the reason why jesus asked his disciple let's go to the other side to to meet these two who were demon possessed did you see the love of god here because jesus see this city people this country people they don't want them right they put them away but jesus came for them hallelujah even i'm telling you the love of god just the compassion of god just flowing you know jesus wants to meet them this country people do not want them in the country they put him away but jesus wants to meet them and jesus came to that place and these demon possessed people did you see how much jesus loved them and these demon possessed people came bowing down and you know in in another book it says they worshiped him it says they worshiped him actually and it means they fell at the feet of jesus you know and they worshiped is is like worship is like a attitude of our heart is attitude of our heart is like a love and honor and respect for for the son of god right so that's why they fell at the at the feet of jesus and now so demons are talking why did you come here to torment us you know to um to um to harass us why you know you know that's what you need to understand when we have jesus in us when we have jesus in us demons will feel torment demons feel torment to them so this the son of god comes demons feel torment that's why he's saying that why did you come to torment us you know and they were so scared and afraid and he, he, they were begging jesus please you know if you want us to leave this man, this this man please command us to go into those pigs it means did you see that that is what authority means without giving permission they cannot move anywhere beloved that's all when they see jesus they will be frozen they just freeze that's all they'll be like a frozen they cannot move anywhere jesus have to give permission to leave them and even to enter into the pigs they're asking jesus permission that's why you know some people are afraid today you know when they don't want to be near to people who are demon possessed because they think that those demons will leave if we are casting out demons they think that oh the demons will leave and enter into them <laughs> other people that's why they don't they don't come near did you see here <clears throat> they need permission <clears throat> they need our permission even to go enter into anybody they are asking permission jesus said he even he granted their request demons request also he granted right and he said okay go no and then and they went into the pigs there and there were um, men who were taking care of pigs you know they were uh, tending the pigs and they saw all this they saw they saw these men they knew this man and what happened to this man because they were delivered immediately after that they were delivered and they they sat at with him is is with right mind you know i don't know whether it says here right mind but in another book it says you know they sitting with jesus with right mind right mind i want you to know this word right mind it means before they did not have right mind you understand 
so when when the demons were there in them they disturbed even the mind of the those people so they were not in the right mind they were not in the right sense okay suddenly when demons left them they become right mind okay they they become right mind so that's why they were before they were naked because they don't have a right mind they didn't even wear clothes after they become right mind they start they wore clothes okay and they right, is is written in another book there with right mind they were sitting at the feet of jesus okay and then this word spread this news spread everywhere in the town and and you know i i was so surprised to see because they came to jesus and begged jesus to leave to leave their place why these people don't want jesus to live in their city you know i told you right maybe all those people also have demons because demons feel torment the presence of god makes demons very tormented uncomfortable they don't want jesus to be around these people begged jesus to leave the city and go away okay then um he leaves and then he goes back into the boat and uh, you know jesus crossed the sea and goes into his own city and then uh, after this incident he leaves and goes back right so only he, for those two people jesus came okay and then when he went back into the city there's another paralytic person came in you know he he went into a house actually he was uh, ga he gathered many people gathered in the house he was preaching and then there was a paralytic man and he had no room to get in into the house and so what they did is they opened the roof and but actually we should appreciate the people who carrying that paralytic man they took that risk and to open the roof because paralytic person cannot do that the people who are carrying have to do that right open the roof is for them to take that much risk means look at their faith it means they were 100% sure that this paralytic man is going to receive healing that's the reason they took risk right when you, you take risk only when you are very sure about something only you are going to take risk right so that's why jesus saw that more than paralytic person faith whose faith is more here great those four people who carried him who took the risk to open the roof their faith is much greater than the paralysis actual paralytic person jesus said you know look at looking at their faith jesus decided to heal that person <laughs> you know sometimes you know what i'm telling you the person who has the problem might not have enough faith but if you have faith for that person if you are a mother or if you are a friend if you are a you know parent of the person or if you are somebody related to that person someone who is connected friends or someone who connected to that person have faith also miracles can happen you know so jesus saw those four people faith and looked at that man and said um, your sins take courage your sins are forgiven ha ah, then that person and you know why before healing that person jesus first had to release forgiveness to that person before actually healing that person so you need to very you have to see how miracles he did every miracle is a different way happened okay in this case this miracle happened first jesus had to release forgiveness to that person and then he says to that person pick up your mat and walk and then the person gets healed he picks up the mat and walk right but before that 
he had to release forgiveness to him. Your sins are forgiven. Beloved, sometimes people live in guilt, condemnation. Beloved, sometimes our guilt, condemnation stops our healing. That blocks our miracles. That's the reason Jesus wants to give him that confirmation. Son, you are forgiven, son. You are forgiven. Don't live in guilt. Your guilt will block your blessing. You are forgiven. You know, so Jesus said to that person, you are forgiven. And then the person got encouraged. That's why, you know, he's saying that take courage because he was discouraged maybe before. He was living in shame and guilt, right? And then when Jesus said that, he was, he was encouraged. And then, and then he says, ah, now he's ready for his miracle, right? And then Jesus said that, now pick up your mat. Pick up your mat and walk, okay? So he picked up, he picked up immediately. He picked up, as I said, paralysis obeyed. That word obeyed, pick up your mat means, oh, paralysis, who are you? Who are you? When he wants, he wants to pick up mat, when he wants to walk, who are you, paralysis? You cannot stop him. That's the authority Jesus' words have. That's it. They yielded, paralysis yielded, submitted, and he picked up the mat and walked, you know. And then and the other people have problems now. People who are listening, mainly I'm telling you the people uh, who is going to have problems with these kind of things, you know, who was fully like a religious mindset because they were all filled with law, filled with law, right? They were only going according to the law. Oh, is it written like this? Then why, how come, who is he to forgive sins? You know, is it like that? Is it like in the law, it was never mentioned that way, <coughs> right? So it was not mentioned that way. So the, how come he, he is saying that your sins, who is he to forgive our sins? Like that. People have questions. People have problems to believe that, you know? And that's why and Jesus telling them, you know, do you think is it easy? Is it easy to forgive sins? Is it easy to tell, pick up your mat and walk? Do you think, is it that easy? That cost my life. You know why Jesus said that word? That's not easy. That's going to cost my life, right? Because the why sins are forgiven to us today because of Jesus' sacrifice. He was going to give his life as a sacrifice. For that sacrifice, today we could be forgiven. And not only that, why those sicknesses, diseases are obeying Jesus? Why they are leaving us today? Because the price what he paid on the cross. It was not an easy way he got this power and authority. He did not receive this authority to forgive people. And he did not receive authority to heal people in an easy way. No, it didn't, it, that authority did not come easily, beloved. That authority he received by paying price. The great price he paid for him to have that kind of authority. The price he paid is his life, beloved. His blood he shed. You know, that's why he received that authority. You know, so, and then he, um, yes, he, see Matthew, he's writing, he's writing him about himself. This book is written by Matthew. He's writing about himself now. Jesus saw at, as he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. You know, here, um, the tax collector, right? Tax collectors means in the people, they look down 
that they look at tax collectors as a very like a um, uh, sinners. Why? Because tax collectors they they cheat. They take more money. They take they take bribes. They they cheat. They take they forcibly they beat people and they make people to pay money. You know, and they're very um, ruthless. These tax collectors are very ruthless, and not only that, and um, they they uh, if they're given bribes, they will let them go. That kind of they they uh, do injustice in between for money. You know, they they um, whoever gives money for them, they don't punish like that. We have a tax collectors have a very bad reputation in society because everybody knows their character. You know, so when Jesus saw this tax collector Matthew, he asked him to follow. My God, today you need to know when Jesus is asking us to follow him is don't think that he only asking people who are righteous and no beloved, there's nobody righteous actually. When he even when we are in a mess, even when we are in sin, way even we, you know he he calls he calls us he calls he called Matthew tax collector he called. To follow him because Jesus is not looking at your present condition, who you are, what you have done, your past. That's not what God looked at you to call you. God created you. He made a destiny for you. He made. He is the one who who has a call upon your life. He made your destinies. So he calling you. That's all. You need to respond. And he went. He, he followed. And then these again Pharisees got have a problem with that now. You know. And he's, he saw so many people, tax collectors sitting with him. All the sinners who were, you know, so-called people think, oh, they are sinners. For them, Pharisees, they look at people, oh, these are sinners. These are righteous like that. For them. But according to God. There was no one righteous in this world. Okay. But in their, in human eyes, they, we think, oh, some are holy, some are sinners. We think, but according to God, no one is holy. You know, and they were coming to disciples and telling, why your teacher is sitting with tax collectors and sinners, you know, and Jesus overheard their conversation, right? And then he says that, you know, sick person need a doctor, right? And you know what? You think they're sinners, actually they need me. You know why they're sinners? Because they need God's love. Many times, beloved, people get into sin because they don't have a solution for their problem. And sometimes... They don't have love. Nobody gives them love because they don't receive love from anybody. That's the reason also they turn into wrong things. They get into wrong addictions, wrong things, you know, wrong crowd. They go into the wrong crowd, beloved. People, sometimes they need solution for their problems. If they don't find it, they go and they need love from God. When they don't find the love from people, they go, beloved. That's why he's telling them, you know, sick person only need doctor. Sinners need me. They need my power. They need my love. You know, so that's what he was telling them. And then he's also telling them, you know, um, I desire sacrifice. I, I um, sorry. Uh, I uh, I desire compassion, not sacrifice. You know why he said that word? Um, because these people are bringing so many sacrifices every year. These uh, they go to the tabernacle and they bring sacrifices to God. Right, lamb as a sacrifices, and they're thinking that wow. 
we are holy because we brought sacrifice to god you know we become holy now that's what they are thinking but god is telling them i don't desire sacrifices i just desire compassion i want you to love i want you to love god you should love god not your sacrifices you are thinking that you are loving god you are not loving god you need to love god you know people if you do without have love for god even though you do any kind of sacrifices today god is not going to accept those sacrifices in your life god desires love from your heart love god love people you know that's what god wants right you know so and people um the question about fasting these you know you understand these people have lots of questions who are these people not the people gentiles don't have any questions they're just simply following him they're simply amazed by his the miracles what he's doing he's amazed they are amazed by his teachings they just attracted him they just follow him follow him but the ping people who who know the word of god who know the law who following the law that's why i'm telling them who are the religious people means that they just don't understand the heart of god the people who do not understand the heart of god who do not know god personally but they just know the word they know the word they know everything the law you know they follow the law right that's what religious spirit means believer religious spirit means they just go according to the law right but they're not thinking about the heart of god what god wants what god desires what is his heart what god pleases you know that's not important for them right so that's what the religious people means here these people have lots of questions they're not understanding because they're not able to understand jesus because because what they learned till now it's not fitting for them what jesus is doing is not fitting well in their minds because their minds were filled with some kind of teaching they learned something till now but what jesus is doing totally opposite what they learned till now so that's why they were confused they were having lots of questions they were having problems with everything what jesus is doing everything what jesus is teaching they were having lots of problems you know so they're asking disciples you know you yeah, why you, you know they're asking jesus why your disciples are not fasting because it was given in the in the in the law of moses they they need to fast right they regularly they do fasting like you know you know even today some people they just fast because for the sake of oh i need to fast once in a week okay or i need to fast once in a month right so it is like some set of rules they follow some set of rules but there is no purpose behind that fasting it's not following the leading of holy spirit they're not just hearing god okay because god is leading me to fast so that's why i want to fast it's not that they just follow the some set of rules right like a ritual like a ritual so like that they were asking you know jesus why your disciples are not fasting you know everyone else is fasting you know then jesus says one thing you know fasting usually why we do when you are sad when you have a need when you are in problem you are going to fast but when you when the bridegroom is with you what is the need to fast the day is coming the church is going to fast one day church is the bride bridegroom is jesus christ right when jesus goes leaves this world and go you need to fast right so it means here when you have people with you you are so happy when bridegroom is with you this is the time to rejoice now it's not time for fasting when i leave that time they will fast so he told them let them rejoice let them be joyful now let them have good time now you know so then he was telling them you know um uh, 
new wine, new, new old wine, you know, new wine skin and uh, old wine. You know, see what he was telling you. God, he 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 recognized right. Jesus Jesus knows. He he grasped something. These religious people really confused, and they have lots of doubts and questions about what I'm doing. Everything. They were in a dilemma. They were in, you know, lots of confusion happening in their minds. That's why he was saying that, you know what? You're trying to connect to what I'm doing with your, your own knowledge, what you learned. You know, you're trying to connect with me, my doing, my teachings, with your knowledge, what you had before. These both cannot go together, beloved. That's why he given that example, you know. Old wine skin, you cannot put a new wine in a old wine skin. What happens? A new wine can tear the old wine skin. They cannot go together. And old wine skin will be torn by the new wine. If you want to store a new wine, better you get a new wine skin and store the wine in that. So what you're trying to do is that if you want to understand my teachings, if you want to know me, if you really want to know me, you must be born again. You must come out of that world knowledge, world thinking. Unless you born again, you cannot really understand what I am doing today, what I'm teaching this today. You cannot understand these things. You cannot know my heart. If you really want to know me, you must born again first. You must become new, new creation. That's what he was talking about. You must become a new creation to know me to understand the spiritual things, you know? So, um, beloved, we have to be born again in the, in the spirit, in, in, the, in, in the spirit, we have to be born again because spiritual things cannot be discerned with the flesh. Everything in the, in the Old Testament mentioned about like, you know, physically doing things, physically bringing a lamb, physically doing things, right? But now a spiritual come, you know, now everything is spiritual now. Connect with spirit now, you know. You need to become a born again in your spirit to understand the spiritual things. You can't understand the spiritual things with your fleshly mind. You should come out of your fleshly carnal mind, carnal way of thinking. Okay, that's what he meant. Then uh, he went in um, into the synagogue, and then and he was teaching there. But there is one officer came to him and said that you know my daughter just died. Can you please come? Can you please come and lay hand on my daughter, and my daughter will come back to life, right? And then I think it's too much now. It's uh, all almost twelve past, right? So. Because there is so much um, in this, I can explain this next week, okay? Because these miracles of healing is so important for us to give more thought and more time because that's how we receive our faith from these miracles, right? So I will continue next week. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, chapter 9, half I did, okay?